at Driving Culture 4. This is High Beast Radio. We're sitting down with Edison Chen, Kevin Pone from Clot. I'm Adriel Stinney, here with Ben Rosen, your co host. Awesome. Uh, hey, hey guys, how's it going, guys? What's up? What's up? Not bad. Cold in New York. <laughs> yeah, so uh, just kicking things off, I mean, like, you know, of course, what brings you guys to New York is the runway show. You guys are doing your first runway collection. How was that? Mm hmm. Um, it was, uh, it was really sudden. Um, we, we didn't find out that we were going to do this show until maybe uh, a couple days before the year ended last year. So, you know, actually, it was, it was actually um, pretty challenging to try to come yeah. up with the concept, get the team, and get some new clothes on the runway. But, um, you know, I think we learned a lot about ourselves through the process and at the same time kind of pushed our limits and, you know, um, gave us new goals, you know, like uh, we, we used to kind of think that we wanted to get to a certain extent. And then now we're kind of reaching further now because of the opportunity that we had um, in New York. Right. Yeah. And, you know, we had about six weeks to prepare, but overall I think we had a great team and that's really what was really important, you know? So um, the production, the styling, um, the creative direction, I think everything just kind of came together and we were happy to hear that everyone really liked it. So we're stoked. Yeah, and speaking of the team, you guys had, like, a lot of, like, you know, friends of the brand help out. Could you go into, like, detail of, like, who was behind the scenes helping out? I mean, you know, from the models to the florists, like, the floral artists to the stylists to... Casting. Everyone, you know? Like, we had uh, Azuma Makoto, uh, Jen Williams. Fire. Um, Eugene. Ian. Um, you know, on the runway, we had Sean Weatherspoon. And we had... Alele. Yeah. yeah. I don't even remember, man. You know, we had so many Tabitha. There were a lot. You know what was good about this uh, show is that um, most of the people that worked on there, um, we've known for years. Like, mm -hmm. it wasn't like, you know, we're just meeting and trying to fill each other out. It was like, we knew exactly what they were bringing to the table. And we had real relationships with them. Yeah. So, you know, like the, 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 a lot of our friends who were walking, they were walking maybe for the first and their last time. And, um, you know, they're Dr. In the, Wu. Yeah, they're in the back, like, you know, like <laughs> talking to each other. It's like, oh, yeah, it's my first time. It's like, oh, it's your first time, too? It's like, my first time, too. And it was like, Cali, do it. I think it was a, it was, it was really a group effort from every angle, man. Like, you know, down to the people who participated in the crowd, you know, um, it was, it was a lot of good energy. And, um, I think, you know, it was positive vibes because we're all like a family. I mean, you know, um, like, especially now, it's like kind of a testament to how the world is now. Um, Although we might be continents apart, um, you know, friendship tr stays true no matter how long you don't see someone or how far they are. And um, this not only was like a fashion show, it was like a it was like a family get together. Yeah, family show, a reunion. Yeah, yeah, yeah and a special shout out, an honorable mention to Jade who's sitting mm -hmm. here silently yeah. despite walking in the <laughs> show. We had to change her look like three times uh -huh. just because yeah. you know Jade. Too fly. Jade has high expectations and shit. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they let you wear your aviators on the runway. Like, that's a move. That's like an actual look now. Yeah, no. So we, we, we actually, you know, I think an important thing that, you know, a lot of for us, especially for the models, was um, just to be themselves. You know, they're like, yo, I don't know if I can do the model walk. And it's like, <laughs> we, don't self, want, yeah. we don't want the model walk. We just want you to walk the way that you would walk. But um, it was funny because... You know, we got the, the, the stills after the show, and it was like everyone had their Killed like it. blue steel or their magnum on. You know what I mean? It was yeah. like, yo, I never knew you had this look in you, yeah. man. Like, wow, you got to give this look more. It's a killer. Very instinct. Professional. Yeah. <laughs> so, Game you know, like, you know, that's why I think that this, this show was successful no matter what anyone else says to us because um, we had a fun time. Yeah, doing it was it. fulfilling that was and it was fun. And it was like, you know, me and Kevin, we don't get to spend a lot of time either. Um, and, this kind of forced us to, you know, come together, um, talk together, and work yeah. together. Um, you know, we we had we always have our ups and downs, and you know, it was crazy that this this show was like so stressful that you know we'd get into it, and then after we'd get out of it, and then we'd just become, you know, it was just good. It was just it was interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Six weeks yeah. sounds like a crazy time crunch too. Like, what was what were some of the challenges behind the scenes in putting something together on such short notice? I think the challenge is also we've never been to the show venue. So we had to like visualize what everything looked like in, you know, a short span of time without even being in the space. And I remember 
we were both in Tokyo randomly and we met up for a coffee like early morning. It was like, hey, so what do you want to do? And it was like, oh, bomb, bomb. And then like in less than 10, 15 minutes, we figured out the concept. We wanted to, you know, showcase our logo and have you know, the the models walk and then stand on the platform. And then, you know, it was Chinese New Year around the time. And Edison had a great idea about getting our favorite floral artist, Azuma, to kind of flip like a cherry blossom situation. And then through that, that kind of everything else kind of just came together. Yeah, I mean, you that. know, the, I think that the, 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 the most interesting part for me was putting together the collaborations for the show. Yeah. Um, you know, for me... Uh, you know, I, I always tell like all my fans to dream big and you know, when they told me about the show, I was like, man, I got to do the same thing. I tell my, yeah. my fans, I got to dream real big mm -hmm. for this one. And you know, luckily like, you know, I, like I, even on the captions on Instagram, it's like, I could, we could not have done this without our friends and you know, mm -hmm. friends aren't made overnight. And you know, it's like, it's almost like a testament to, you know, we've been doing this for 15 years. Some people might only know us because of our Nikes, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah, man, we've been putting in work for, for a lot, decade yeah. and a half, man. And, um, you know, we're really thankful that people like, you know, Sakai, Cali, um, Fear God, you know, new brands like Medium Rare, you know, Dr. Wu, they just on a dime, just like be like, all right, cool. We're down. Expert and we're horror. Gonna, yeah. Expert horror. Like, you know, all these people were just like yeah, I'm down. When's the v due long. date? Yeah, when's the due date? And it was like, um, it's in three weeks. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're like, oh, you know, John we're... Elliott. Yeah, John Elliott helped us out. Like Nike, definitely. Yeah, shout I was going to say, Nike. how many in total were on the runway? Because I know we mentioned the models and a lot of the behind the scenes. You mentioned we the wanted, floral stuff, but we wanted to have 36 cohesive looks, and then we ended up having I think 48 at the end. Yeah, because the somewhere we the somewhere CLO t uh, tees were um, we counted as one look but then there's four models so i think we ended up with 44 right yeah 45 i think yeah something, something like, like that. that yeah 45 <laughs> looks and the collaborations man i don't even i can't even i can't even remember the I usual mean, suspects nike converse and then like from there just yeah like Catherine bernhardt medicom toy fear of god sakai mm -hmm. um medium rare yep. um herschel. john elliott herschel um Man, what else? I'm, I, I swear, like I'm everybody on a, yeah, it's just like everybody on a three week yeah. on a three week turnaround too. No, it was great, but you know, also I think it, it's crazy because a lot of people don't really even you know this is the first time they're hearing about our brand, and like I think people don't really do brands like this anymore because you know, fifteen years. I think a lot of people just do brands for like three years, five years, then they'll flip it and move on to the next thing, and right. we just somehow held on to it for this long so it's it, it's been crazy yeah and i mean talking about like you know being in the game for as long as you guys have like what were some of the, like what was the decision that prompted you guys to go runway do you feel like that's what brands have to do nowadays or is it just something like to show like the next step for a clock well i think we were we've been making clothes and we we, we don't have a big distribution so it's fairly kind of tight within our own stores mm -hmm. and in online and so, you know, we had an opportunity to work with uh, CFDA. And so they chose us to be one of the four brands to be showcased because they have this big kind of, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's like a partnership with China. And so we got selected as one of the finalists and they were like, hey, do you want to do the show? And that's kind of how... Uh, the nucleus of it started i think i think the, the 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 defining moment for us between like a presentation and doing like an actual runway show was two things was when we started really thinking about this show and doing the music selection um the music was so dramatic and theatrical that it didn't seem right to just do something where people were just standing and walking around and looking at the clothes it felt like it needed motion it needed some emotion and motion and then, um, I can't get Dr. Wu to stand there for 45 minutes to like, <laughs> pretend that to be a That was one of the man. conversations <laughs> like, we had. Like, like, it's like, it's like, we, 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 we just, Tired. yeah, they'd be like, they'd got, they'd be God, man. They'd be like, yo, yeah. I gotta go, man. You know, And so. I think some of our friends are really fancy and I don't think they would want to stand around for that long too. So we were like, let's just seat them and have particulars. Everyone that we invited was like, save me a good seat, man. So, at, at you know, that was kind of stressful because the space had a capacity yeah. situation. That's the other stress of Fashion Week is, like, everybody's yeah. worried about front row. Yeah, and at the end, like, a lot of people that we wanted to come see it didn't see it, but we still had a lot of good people that came through.
Yeah, so we went over the runway, but um, in addition to that, you guys are doing a new Nike collaboration that's coming out, the Silk Air Force One. Um, you guys first collaborated in 2006. So how was that like, you know, partnering with them again? You know, we, uh, we're we really blessed that Nike is um, has been working with us um, for almost maybe 10 plus years now, man. The first and shoe was the Air Max. Yeah, the Kiss of Death. And, um, you know, the first time around that we did this shoe... Uh, it was red. It was the 25th anniversary. Um, I wouldn't say it got lost in the mix, but, you know, I think at that moment, I don't know if it was like people weren't on it or weren't ready for it or it was just, you know, like Asian culture wasn't an impact in, you know, Western. But it still did stuff. well. Yeah, it did, but it wasn't It wasn't received the way it is received this time. Right. You know, like it's like... Uh, I just think sneaker culture has also gone way bigger since 2006 right. critical yeah. mass yeah definitely yeah. every you know what i mean like everyone is a sneakerhead even like my friends that are traditionally not into sneakers are like oh how can we get sneakers so i think that's just a testament of the the, the market too you know yeah but yeah definitely really stoked to to do the shoe air force one which yeah we're, we, we're, we have a lot of goodies coming with nike so we're just blessed to be a part of the team. We're going to be uh, heavy um, in L.A. during the All-Star Weekend. Um, this weekend, um, on the 16th, we have pop-ups in uh, L.A., New York, San Francisco, London, Paris um, for these silks. So, uh, you know. Tokyo, too, no? Yeah, in Tokyo, yeah. yeah. It sounds man. like you're going to be jet-setting for the next month and a half. Uh, no, after I mean for me, I'm after All Star Weekend. I'm 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 laying the fuck low, and but Poon is jet setting, man. He's going to uh, Milan, and Milan, Paris, Paris and, yep. and then Hong Kong Man for uh, our Basel. That You're going to have big. jet lag for the next two months. I know exactly. Oof, that's crazy. But I feel like I see the same people in every like the same like different city, but the same people. So it's all it, a blur. Yeah, it's like the, no, it actually is the same people. So I don't I don't even know what to make of it. We had mentioned we were talking about this earlier, and I, I think you guys might be able to explain this a bit better than I would. But you mentioned like the like certain shoes that get lost in the sauce. What is the clot graveyard like? The the hall of sneakers, right? Yeah, you saw that. Yeah, online. Yeah, yeah. My that that graveyard where shoes go to die. <laughs> He's Nardwar. <laughs> go to die. No, it's yeah. it's actually where shoes go to live. <laughs> No, well, the the graveyard is was was made. I don't know so how funny. it was made made famous, man. Like you know, we, me when me and Poon lived together, um, people would come to our house and there would be a, an an abundance of DVDs mm -hmm. and shoes, and people would always be like, "Oh, this is crazy! This is crazy! This is crazy!" Like we'd have thousands and thousands of shoes and DVDs, and um, you know, we when we moved to the office, we gave um a whole section to these shoes. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. And like. Some soles were falling off because, you know, like they were so old. Some of the shoes, yeah, like the glues falling apart yeah. and whatnot. Like, you know, we hit, we, like, if you go in this graveyard, you can find some crazy gems. Mm -hmm. Like the NERD Babestas were in there chilling and they were chilling there so long that the, the, yeah, they fell well, like apart. First generation you know? Jordans, crazy Nikes, everything. It's our, it's our, it's our reference catalog. It's the archive. Yeah. That's where all the cheat codes are at. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you know, touch on, of course, like, you know, just the early days of Clot. But for, like, the first time listeners, like, how did you two first meet? Oh, well, we went to school together. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Edison was really into basketball, and I think they needed a filler person for the basketball team. So he was like, you need to join the basketball team. And I think that was, the rest was history, yeah. I mean, I didn't play get to play much because I was on the bench most of the time, but it was good energy. <laughs> No, yeah, I think you know it's funny, um, you know, especially for these, uh, you know, for the for the younger listeners out there, this shit was a dream for us, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I left Hong Kong when I was sixteen, seventeen, and jokingly, I told a bunch of my friends, and one of them was Poon, that after everyone finishes school, we have to come together and yeah. do something, and. I think we were just really against having desk jobs and the idea of wearing a suit to work. That was like the opposite of what we wanted to do so we were really into like gangster films at the time like goodfellas and casino and all that and we're like hey wouldn't it be cool if we could do something that doesn't require us to wear a suit every day and still make a living off of and that was kind of the premise right yeah i mean you know it was, we didn't know what we were doing but um you know we had to do everything on our own like 
pack boxes, do the invoicing, you know, shipping, everything we learned on the job. So it's, it's I mean, even how to make clothes. Like yeah. we're we're not gonna lie and be like, man, we went to a fashion school and did this. Like we 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 had a hard time making our first t shirt. Like you know, and we've we luckily we've had a core fan base that has been supporting us, and you know, a lot a lot of partners that let us sell their brand in our store. And through the trials and tribulations, like if ten years ago. New York Fashion Week asked us to do this and we took it, I'm pretty sure we would have failed horribly. So, you know, it was like everything just came together at the right time. You know, like, you know, um, we've learned through our mistakes and through our mistakes, we we found a way to shine. And also, I think we were, you know, when we started, it was like toy culture was really big, like vinyl toys and collectibles and things like that. And that's kind of how we got into it through that and sneakers. And also, like, I think, Japan influenced us a lot, uh, Harajuku and that whole movement. And so that was like a culmination of things and kind of like where our roots are from. Yeah, I mean, like, I've lined up outside a neighborhood store for two and a half hours before, my, you know, like, and that's true. Like, and that's why we, you know, me, in the, in the beginning, we kind of had the momentum to try to build juice because we had juice before we had clot. And Juice was to try to be able to carry these brands in Hong Kong without it being a reseller price. Because we were just like, why do why doesn't Hong Kong or why doesn't we have a store that can carry all the things that we like? Sneakers, toys, T-shirts, jeans, and all that. Incense, incense yeah. burners. You know, all, all the little things that people, it's like very popular now, I guess, which is kind of weird. Yeah, it used to be so niche. Yeah. Now it's like everybody is into incense burners. Yeah, which is great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you guys mentioned that the, the first T-shirt was a real struggle. We always kind of try to touch on people's origin stories, but what was the first T-shirt that you guys worked together you know, on? It's crazy, man. Is The first T-shirt we ever made was with Matsaki, and Matsaki is like a, a boss right now, you know? Mm. He's signed to Kai Kai Kiki. He's doing shows with Takashi Murakami. But 15 years ago, our first T. We did Alien Negra face tees. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. With the glitter. The glitter would come off the tee. I mean, our customers before, were like, why are the glitters coming off? And we like, it's that, on purpose. We were still, we were making t shirts a little bit before that. No, no. No, never. All the anniversary tees were after that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I don't even remember. It's been too long now. Yeah. So the first, the first real kind of push into making a garment was uh, making something. We were making Alien merch Negra. before that, no? Yeah, but it wasn't really uh, our brand. We yeah, didn't even exactly. have a brand then. No, yeah. Like, it, was a Alien Negra. it was an Alien Negra tag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we were doing merch for ourselves, like all oh, juice oh, store yeah. merch. Like, yeah. you know, like, like for juice the fair break. Yeah. And gotcha. like, you know. We didn't have an idea to start a brand at first. And then we just, it, we were just like, oh, like we were doing well with some brands. And some brands, like s people stole them from our, our, our store. And then we we're like, oh, this 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 kind of sucks, you know. And like, if if we make our own brand, then no one can take that away from us. And that was kind of the 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 process. Yeah. Yeah, and being based in Hong Kong, like, how difficult was it to like, you know, tap into the Western market? Because you guys have done a great job of that through like collaborations, like early on. But like, how how difficult was it like starting out? I don't think we consciously really did um, um, think about it that way. You know, I didn't think that we were thinking like how how can we get these people to notice or understand us. Um, but like you said, luckily we we've we've worked with so many great brands from, you know, Nike to Hiroshi to the old school Bape, you know, like to Neighborhood back then. And I think you know people that understand the culture and understand um, these companies, well, they they probably be like, who? Why are these people working with this company, Liam Clot? You know, and hopefully throughout the years we've kind of um, been able to kind of prove ourselves through all the work that we've we've done because we've amassed a huge catalog of things that sometimes even I forget. I mean, like, you know, people be like, hey, those Vizums you did. I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, oh, yeah. You know, like, you know, it's like, oh, where are mine? You know, like, oh, they're gone, you know? Well, I think more so than that, I think we are kind of second generation kids and I think we ha we grew up not knowingly have a global mindset. So I, Edison grew up in Vancouver, I studied in LA and so it was like a lot of bouncing around and, and just being from place to place. And so I think with that, you know, we were just lucky to be kind of hybrids of like Chinese culture and also 
European or uh, American culture. And just to find a balance with that, uh, I think we, we, we kind of just not knowingly discovered it. And also just doing a lot of different things that have were cross-cultural and and it's it's been cool. I think I think also like a random point to kind of talk about is back then, which was man a, a quite a long time ago, um, the internet wasn't what it is now. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think that the everyone like especially I think us we're we're a very interesting group of people because we used to not have the internet. We're the last and, and generation. Now we yeah, have an, the internet, so it's like. When we started, we we didn't even know how to utilize this thing, you know. And it was like it's like thank God for the internet because, and thank you know, and, and kind of like oh fuck the internet too at the same time now because it's like an over amount of information. It's like oh my elbow hurts, and it's like oh it's because of this, and then you look somewhere else. It's because of this. Like you should use this. You should use this. It's like goddamn man, which one am I supposed to use? <laughs> but uh, you know, back then. It was so analog and then we were turning into this digital thing that we we weren't even aware that we could reach so far you know it's like it wasn't like something that it's like a normal like today like a new brand can be popular not from where they are and in a total different country and that would have never happened um uh, 15 15 years ago yeah you used to used to be like when you used to search out for kind of kicks or whatever like you'd have to really dig and like go to stores and they didn't have directories like you'd have to find them and they'd make it really hard for you to find them just so that it's like a discovery thing and i think that people don't really realize that now but that's how things used to be like if you wanted to get something you would have to go search it out and like try to ask a friend like where is this store because there was no Google Maps or none of that. I really think a lot of people just forget that being a sneakerhead, yeah. being a hype beast, whatever you want to call it, used to be a lot more like being like a comic book nerd than we're giving a credit. Like it used to really be like you're saying, yeah. like you had to go look at an archive, you had to ask someone like, "Yo, I'm looking for this pair of Dunks that only yeah. came out 12 years ago." Like that Super kind of thing. Future City, like you'd have to go on like that was some random shit that I remember, but Super like Super Future, yeah. Yeah, no, and like you know, we're, like nowadays you can you can have a lot of money and have everything back then you, you you could have a lot of money and still have nothing like you know like you you'd ha- you, you you just you just can't you know what i mean like nowadays it's like you're like all oh, these you're like i'm going to drop buy, yeah. drop all this money and i can just buy this back then it was like you can't even see it like you know what i mean like where's a picture of this thing mm-hmm. like you know what I mean? like what's going they, on here they don't you know? remember yeah. this era and you know i think that it's good and bad um that you know a lot of you know, on the internet now, you can kind of sample things, but you know, I've 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 told a lot of the the people that kind of so called look up to me in China. I tell them like, you can't just sample. You have to live it. You have to feel it. You have to understand it. And not see some pictures and then say you know because you really don't. You know what I mean? Like, and also, I can't say that I knew stuff about the '70s and stuff. I can be like, hey, I looked at it and I was like, I think this is cool and this is cool. But you know, it, there's a there, there's 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 a world out there. You should go and look at it and enjoy it and feel it instead of just going on a www dot thing and and saying like, you know, I'm no disrespect to this this website, but you know, I I really feel like the more and more the future we get into, the less and less contact we have with the physical world. And I think that that's become something. More surface. I think that it's something that we all need to kind of value a little bit more. Yeah. You guys watch Black Mirror? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. what that sounds like. Yeah. And 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 to go back to a point that you were talking about, I think there is sort of like this vein of multiculturalism that goes throughout the entire brand. I think that the last collection was like the Chinese New Year theme kind of shown through, and you guys had the benefit of scheduling and stuff. What is what's sort of the process behind, you know, bringing that multiculturalism? What's the hardest part about bridging the divide be- between East and West on the runway? I think you know, um, a lot of people don't really understand uh, China and Chinese consumers, and that's like you know, I we like to think of it as you know because like the internet doesn't really work the way it does in China as it is in America. And like the way people consume information is different. And it's like, we like to reference it like a submarine. Like, you know, China is kind of like the submarine. Like you can't really get into it, but they're still like in a whole different world, like underworld thing. So for us, it's cool because we kind of understand, you know, what they need and, you know, what is real 
in the real world to us and kind of find a happy medium to that. Because I think, you know, other than just like buying expensive clothes, like there has to be a culture element to it. You know, it can't just be like, hey, like this is the new expensive shit, you know, instead of like really understanding what this brand is about or like what we stand for and like what we're trying to, to say. Right. I think in a lot of ways, like, like you were mentioning, like before the internet and stuff like that, I think that for brands that would be similar to Clot, like theoretically 15 years ago, like you had to build a tribe on the ground. Like that was the step one if you were a streetwear brand, I think, was yeah. like get a bunch of people that are wearing your shirts that look th- like kind of similar or, or like they're a gang. Like you literally have to think of it as a gang mentality. Yeah. And then now because of the internet, like you said, you could be popular in a completely different country with like a completely different context. Mm-hmm. Like I remember like three years ago, like all those kids that were wearing Gosha Rubchinsky that could not for the life of them pronounce the name that they were wearing on their chest mm-hmm. was such a strange thing to me. Is that a strange thing for you guys as people that are designing stuff from the perspective that you're coming from? I think, um, you know, uh a lot of a lot of people have no idea what they're doing in nowadays man you know i, I think. just in general yeah <laughs> in in general i mean look at the world that we live in i think the most important thing is is how something i guess makes you feel but i guess also is what is influencing you to make those decisions and to judge how you feel you know what i mean like it it's it's almost like the internet is running our emotions and running our our kind of standards nowadays especially with lifestyle you know like someone social might see, media is ruining our lives someone might see someone go to a restaurant and they immediately say that restaurant is good they've never been there they even if they go there and they're like mm, maybe this food isn't so good they'll still take a picture of it we were and just show talking it and be about like that. this is like this is the shit you know and you know like i'm an old school kind of guy i feel like i'm older now you know and um it's just it's just it's just very different like it's foreign to me you know like i i I don't know half of these new rappers names i don't i don't i just don't know anymore you know like and i only know what i think is good and I, i i kind of like feel the the pressure of the youth nowadays because you know today you can go on say hype beast and see that five six different companies are using say leopard and then the kid looking at it is like, I'm designing something. I'm going to use Leopard. But they don't understand that that's your creation isn't coming out for three to nine months. And if you're doing the same thing as everyone else, no one's going to care. So, yeah, so it's almost like they, they have to understand that this is just a reference point And it's not telling you what you should be. You know, it's telling you how the world is now. But who you are and what you choose to do and what direction you choose to bring whatever creation you do should come from within and from your heart and not something that someone else tells you. And I think that that's the most important thing for these these kids nowadays because self discovery. They they they're wander wandering lost and then they go for the to the internet for the answers. And the internet may not have all the answers, you know. I think you have to search more deeply within and within your own self and within your own culture, your upbringing. And And on a deeper level, I think, you know, sneakers is good and all, but I think that at at the core, you know, I think, I mean, this might be completely off topic, but I think it's important that after all the consumerism and everything, like we try to actually like set a positive impact and bring positive energy to every situation, you know, whether it's, you know, trying to help out a homeless person or trying to do good little small things every day and i think that after you know the x amount of things that you've purchased like there has to be more to life than just consumerism and just you know belonging and fitting in you know and and i think that's really important also at the core like for example it's like the air force one that we do why is there a second layer underneath it's it's like true beauty is what lies within you know it's like we're, we don't like use it as a tagline, like, you know, when we drop the shoes, but it's more deep. It's more like you have to feel it. You have to understand it. It's not like we're like true beauty lies within silk force ones. You know what I mean? It's like we, we, we hope that w- there's something that through our product that can spark plug you to be like, this is creative. I want to do something similar, not similar as in wrap something else and put something on top of another shoe. It's like making something that has a, a statement that has 
definition that has your own something vibe to it. Yeah, to it. You know, it's not meaning. like oh, it's black and it's got this white little tint on it, and it's like hey, here, here it is. Like we're we're very ra- rarely do designs that are only color tone. The color tones have meanings, have have deep themes, and they're inspired by a certain story, place, or person. You know, yeah. This might be a stupid question, but how long does a Nike collaboration take from start to finish? I mean, it depends on what kind of shoe you were you making. You know, sometimes it can go from six months, and sometimes you can go into development for fifteen months. You know, so you know we've done shoes. I've done shoes that I wish came out, and by the time it came out, like I mean, by the time we we, we were kind of happy with a sample someone else had done it already mm-hmm. and it was like man yeah, well, that's this is crazy before. like this is like sometimes it would make you how upset how do they cope with that does it because that's got to be something that happens with a company as big as that where like even internally there might be another nike that comes out like what happens to the process behind like a clot sneaker if another shoe pops up that looks too similar we drop it and we start working on the next one because um and also, you got to protect your designs because sometimes, like, someone might peek on your computer and just be like, oh, and then they don't even re- realize that that's influenced them. And that's happened before? Oh, yeah. <sighs> it's hard to keep a secret when you're really excited and you want to tell all your friends and you're like, oh. You throw it in the group chat and then, like, three weeks later, oh, you never, see it somewhere? never in the group chat, yeah. Yeah, but now we, we, we have to sign NDAs so we can't show nobody, yeah. you know, or, or our project might get deaded. So that's it. There's, a, there's a good side to it, you know? I think mm-hmm. the 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 difference is how you lay the promotion out now um, is the most important part of uh, uh, the launch of anything, I think, you know, um, whereas before you'd have to use a four month to two weeks kind of campaign to push it through. Literally, you can use two days and just sell the shit out of something. To, right. Now, right. So it, it really I think that the campaign is almost just as important as your shoe or your design you know i, I mean, think how you launch it no like how you build it how you sneak it how people see it for the first time how they understand what it's about you know like you could have the wackest shoe and the best promo and it will sell out man you know right. but you can have the dopest shoe and have no promo and people will be like man it's just whack just because they might have slept on the it. kids aren't saying this or these websites aren't saying this or you know we're at the mercy of of so-called like you know instant kind of gratification you know what i mean and um I think it's it's interesting because we choose different approaches to uh, promote different products every time. So sometimes we use the flash and sometimes we use the long grind, you know. And um, I think through it, we've learned a lot about how and what is the most effective ways to push products. Yeah. I also really like the idea that, like, even if the colorway has a very important like you said, like a layered story to it. At the end of the day, you have to create something that like lives on Instagram for those kids that are like, yeah, need it right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's like you have to almost like compromise. You have to know that you have to be able to market it to the kid that is just instant gratification, like you said, on the surface. But you have to be able to tell the story underneath it. We, we're we're trying to actually make products that make people think deeply. Yeah. About, that's what I'm saying. Like, 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 I think the 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 end of the year, we're gonna be dropping some 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 products that you won't really know what it is until you own it. Like type shit. We love like, that. Like, <laughs> like you won't meaning. even know what you're buying, but you're gonna buy it. Uh huh. And when you buy it, you're gonna love it. Hopefully. <laughs> A clot mystery box. <laughs> And with the shared perspective that you guys have on, like, you know, you know, educating your consumers, like, what what is, like, the future for Clot do you guys see? Like, even if it is, like, the near future versus long term. I mean, for us, I think we always want to, uh, you know, not educate, but, like, share with our fans and our customers. Like, you know, a lot of people ask us, like, hey, I want to start a brand or I want to do something, but I don't know really how to go about doing it. And, you know, the advice that we give them is really just to start small and just start little by little and just, like, you know, start one step at a time. Because, you know, a lot of times people, you know, see us or see other brands and they think, you know, wow, this is super successful. Like, but, you know, a lot of times a lot of the people that are behind the brands, they've spent lots of years, you know, maybe interning somewhere else or, like, you know, building that up for that one moment for you to know about this brand. But be- behind that, there must have been years and years of sweat and tears 
behind that so you know a lot of times we like to tell people you know just don't be afraid to like help your friend out or don't be afraid like a lot of kids come up to us and like hey what's this in for me if i do this for you or, or you know like that kind of mentality and you know i i just think that like don't be afraid to 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 do that extra thing or help your friend out and i think that usually always comes back full circle yeah you know it's uh interesting that you guys talk about that because i think in the past three to four years me and pone have actively been trying to promote creative culture yeah meaning you know um there's an incense maker incense holder maker that pone has definitely helped a lot um his name is kumba no yin oh something studios he's you know the guy making all like the the majin Buu ones and stuff yeah, like that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so you know he ones. you know um pone introduced his stuff to me and he sells it at his at wow and you know, I work with a guy named uh, Jun Wang who makes all those masks and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And you know, it, it, this is a funny story: is is that one of the designs in our fashion show is actually a DM design. So this kid sent me all these designs and sent me sent me sent me clothing samples, and was like, "Hey, man, can I join the team?" So I touched his samples in Chengdu or something like that, and I was like, "Man, these suck! Like these fucking suck, man." I'm gonna be real with you, but the graphics aren't bad, so you should work on your graphics. He sent me a, a, a bunch of new graphics, and I was like, I'm going to use this one in the fashion show just to one-up you. Like, you know? And we're we're really about kind of bringing up the next group of kids. We're not trying to hold them down. Um, we want to grow with them, which is why I work with people like Bari, you know, and stuff like that. You know, like, it's just, I feel like and they, also, can, they can learn a lot from us, but we can also learn a lot from them, you know? And I also think, like, you know, Edison's been a great ambassador for a lot of creative culture and creative thinking, especially in China, because, you know, growing up, our families don't advise us to be creative. You know, it's like you go to school, you get a job, you be accountant or be a lawyer or be something of that sort, right? And I think nowadays people are starting to realize the importance of being creative, whether it's, you know, in streetwear or if you're an architect or if you're a designer or anything you know and so um it's been it's been interesting journey also f opening up that uh door for a lot of chinese kids that want to be creative that haven't had the right education for that so it's been cool but yeah so i mean as you mentioned edison like you do play mentor to like you know a lot of up-and-coming creatives and stuff like what is some what are some like advice that you find yourself giving like most of them is it just to like you know continue to work on your brand or work on your craft as you mentioned? Or? No, it was the thing that I was talking about with about the internet about mm -hmm. you know knowing something that you don't actually know. You know yeah. they're like you know they're like oh yeah you know this this rap stuff or you know this uh, number nine stuff and it was like man you were like six man like how you know this like I shit I don't even have to know you know what I mean like yeah. I just started and number nine disappeared like man I'm just lucky to be a friend with Miasta you know and I think not knowing is not a bad thing. And not knowing is admitting that you have something that you can improve on. And when you can improve yourself, that makes you stronger. And, you know, you know, learning a new thing a day makes you stronger. And when you say, I know everything, then you're kind of denying yourself knowledge, you know. And I think that, like I said, it, it's not just trying to scour the Internet, trying to find photos and, and going on, like, auction sites and trying to find some vintage stuff and go zooming in on how the 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 seams are or something like that it's like really kind of trying to delve into what this company was saying and who miyashita is before you start thinking about number nine or you know or how raf has influenced these people and why he influenced them instead of just like he influenced them so he's cool like why why are people revering him this way you know like uh I, that's what i tell them is like don't pretend to know and don't pretend that the internet seeing a photo makes you a pro because it doesn't you know yeah that's well, like those self uh, people that go on web md and like self-diagnose themselves instead of going to see a doctor that's that's well put but um yeah so a great way that we like to end the podcast with is you know if you were to go back in time and talk to your younger self when you were starting up clot for instance or juice what was some what would be some advice that you guys would give each other wow you know, I would I would tell Poon to uh, be nicer to me always. <laughs> I'm just kidding, uh, man. No, honestly, man. You know, like I said, is like I wouldn't really change a thing. I really wouldn't change one thing because if five years, like I said, even five years ago, if we did this New York Fashion Week thing, I don't know how we would have really been able to do it the way that we did. So, 
I think that, you know, just keep keep being you and keep doing you. Yeah, I think also just to add to that is, you know, I think starting something or, you know, starting something is easy. Maintaining that something is the hard part because it's easy to start something and people get really interested in the beginning. But I think, you know, you just have to put in that work every single day and don't give up because there's been many times that I for sure think that we were like, yo, fuck this, like, let's just quit, you know? But I think that after all that said and done, just keep on going at it and trust in yourself and believe in yourself and have confidence in what you're doing and have a perspective. And I think that's the key. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you for sitting down. Thank you for sharing a little wisdom with us. Yeah, no, thank you, thank guys. You, thank you, hypey Seth Rogen. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> We're keeping that in there. <laughs>